Technology is at the core of the rush to find the new holy grail of the oil and gas industry. Water recycling or waterless hydraulic fra fracturing is the focus of companies who are looking for ways to save money. They also see the growing environmental concerns over the use of water disposal wells, which are being blamed in part for a growing number of earthquakes. Energy companies, large and small, are searching for ways to use water differently. Mike Paik, executive director of the Groundwater Protection Council, says economics is the key driver in their search. All over the country. Uh, the, uh, uh, that's driven by economics. It's, it's driven by, uh, I think, largely economics, but, but also by just trying to be, in, in a lot of cases, trying to get along with the people in whose neighborhood you're drilling. But Paik's reference to getting along is also acknowledgement of growing public pressure on the industry over environmental issues. While she agrees economics are the key reason driving water recycling efforts in the oil patch, Corporation Commissioner Dana Murphy says the industry sees the environmental issues also. We have to make better use of what we have and we have to do a better job of how we develop oil and gas resources, how we protect the environment, how we deal with water. And I think it can actually work, but we, we have to be willing to try new ways and look at new things, and I think that's the thing that we're seeing. The drive to find new ways to use water and reduce water usage in the energy industry is one of the reasons General Electric is building a major new research lab in Oklahoma City. One indicator of the, the opportunities in new technology is General Electric coming in and building their, what, one of eight labs in the world, and the only oil and gas lab in the world on a company of 300,000 people building an international global research lab for oil and gas in Oklahoma City. Energy companies like Apache Corporation have recycled more than 500,000 barrels of produced water for fracking operations in Oklahoma's Atadarko Basin in just recent months. Two years ago, Devon Energy unveiled its huge recycling operation near Calumet in Canadian County, which just last year processed 6.5 million barrels of drilling water that represents 273 million gallons and is 90 percent of the water the company used in its drilling operations in the area. And it's a matter of the environment, it's a matter of economics to make, you know, a greater use of water. Especially, you know, if you're looking in Canadian County, that's, al that's already a county that has issues with water. So really making the most of that, I think that's really important. So yeah, I think we'll see more of that. Devon Energy now says it is expanding recycling in new drilling operations. It is opening up in the Mississippi and Woodford Trend, which runs from Guthrie North to the Kansas border. Production began in August of last year, and Devon says it has already reused more than 400,000 barrels of produced water. South of Lindsay, Oklahoma, Continental Resources is trying out new technology from Portadam, a Pennsylvania company that has made structures used for bridge construction and to hold back rivers for more than 30 years. A portable structure that Portadam CEO Bob Gatta says can be built as big or small as needed. One of the unique things about the Portadam product is it can extend to hold any quantity or volume that you need. It's not a set system. So whether it's 200,000 barrels, 300,000 barrels, 500,000 barrels, there's really no limitation to the amount of water or produced water that the system can hold. Corporation Commissioner Murphy says she wanted to know all she could about this new technology, especially the liners that were used in the temporary structure. Company CEO Bob Gaddis says technology has also advanced that part of their system. It's a combination of liners and mesh and felt material, and the whole system has been engineered. In addition to it being engineered, one of the key requirements is um, that it, there be a rip stop program in the liner system. The Portadam structures have been used in Pennsylvania's Marcellus Shale drilling operation since 2010. The Corporation Commissioner Murphy isn't totally sold on it or other recycling innovations. Because I had all kinds of questions about how this was supposed to work and, and all the dynamics of it. And we have, I think now, five uh, flowback pits, recycling pits, of over uh, around 500,000 barrels or more. 
Commissioner Murphy says because of the unique drilling requirements in Oklahoma and the size of some of the operations, some of the attempts at recycling water are turning out to be less than impressive. Um, I've probably met with at least five companies that do water recycling on these smaller scale bases, but you just haven't really seen that take off yet. So I, I think it's just a matter of timing and the economics for things. But that has not dampened enthusiasm for the search to find ways to save water, and for that matter, in the use of water altogether in fracturing operations. In Kentucky, for, as one example, uh, the hydraulic fracturing in Kentucky is largely uh, nitrogen, not non-water fracks. That's more because of the coal, the nature of the geology, than it is economics. It's just easier to frack with nitrogen than it is uh, with water. Corporation Commissioner Murphy sees waterless fracturing as another new technology that will bring more change to oil and gas development. Moving towards zero water use because there's some of the companies that are looking for a different medium to move the propens for the fracturing fluid like uh, propane, so liquid propane gas because that can be at certain pressures it can be treated more like a gel in use. So I think you're going to see um, looking at different mediums other than water Meanwhile, back at the Groundwater Protection Council, Mike Paik says his organization is looking for new ways to help spread the water wealth nationwide. We're looking at marrying uh, places where there's a, a water deficit, whether it's an aquifer uh, or a public water supply, with places where there's an abundance of water. And in many instances, a lot of that water is in the hands of the oil and gas industry. Some parts of this country the largest owner of water, other than public water supplies or reservoirs and that obvious stuff, irrigators, largest owner of water is the oil and gas industry. Which again opens up opportunities for technology to impact water supplies. All those uh, huge, huge amounts of water uh, in some cases could be treated and re-injected to replenish an aquifer. As a water treatment industry, we can treat about anything. Commissioner Murphy says the lack of water in parts of Oklahoma is a final reason why oil and gas operations are looking for ways to conserve what limited supplies there are. When you look at what happened at Canton Lake and you look at some of these other things, I mean, you know, just for my own family, I mean, we've had to just in, you know, on our farm and ranch, we've cut down our cattle herd, you know, we plant blue stem grass, we, we actually graze out wheat, we don't you know, very limited do we actually, you know, harvest wheat. We, we have to think of water use in a different way. This spring, the Groundwater Protection Council will issue a second edition of its report to the nation on groundwater. It will be available online at gwpc.org.